<laughs> and so, Toastmasters, we have a wonderful program for you this morning. Our first speaker, Mr. Timer, is for 15 minutes. And uh, we charged him for every minute over 10. So, and he's speaking from the... Outside, are we doing that? I think it's taking it. Oh, okay. It's the professional, professional series. Oh, the professional series. And this guy is a real professional. He stands on the platform as though he owns the, the meeting. And that is as a uh, speaker should. So I'm very happy to present to you our first speaker. And he will give you the title of the speech. And he himself uh, really uh, is the introduction. So I present to you our speaker number one, Toastmaster Dan Collier. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. By a show of hands, how many of you in this room are DTM? Don. Thank you. How many of you aspire to be? How many of you have the goal at some point in your life of becoming DTM? And just to cover the whole room, how many of you would not know a DTM if it came up and bit you in the <laughs> ankle? <laughs> Okay, we are covered very well. Well, for those of you who did not see Bill Yim's speech last week, allow me to bring you up to date. Bill Yim is in pursuit of his Distinguished Toastmaster Award, or DTM. That is the highest award that you can achieve at the club level for communication and leadership. And in Bill's pursuit of DTM, he has selected a project whereby he has assembled four presenters, four presenters, to deliver PowerPoint presentations with different facets, with different skills, over the course of the next month and a half. I am on that team of presenters, so I will proceed to demonstrate three skills for you today. Now those three skills can be summed up in the phrase, simply brand yourself. Simply brand yourself. Simply to remind you to keep your PowerPoint simple, to keep the slides simple and outline. Brand, to remind you to brand your presentation with your company or your organization's logo and colors. And finally, yourself. And that is to remind you that you are delivering the presentation. The PowerPoint is not delivering the presentation. Mm -hmm. It is about the presenter. So simply brand yourself. Now I put together a PowerPoint presentation so that I may demonstrate these skills to you we're going to proceed. Now you'll see the very first thing is the branding, yes? Okay, so this is a presentation that I will be giving at the International Pizza Expo in Las Vegas. And one of the things that I always do with my presentations is branding, so that everybody in the room knows that Pizza Man Dan is in the room. So I use my organization to brand that, and I use the colors behind the scheme. <coughs> That is what stays on the room, on the screen, as people walk by the room, so they know what to expect when they come in. Now, further branding, again, using your logos, your photos, and your colors. Now, we talk about keeping the slides simple. In front of you, there is a piece of paper that looks like this. If you just look around and see if you can locate that. This is part of a handout that I give out to everybody who is attending the presentation. So what happens is rather than print the slides separately, I print them in a format that allows people to take notes. Now why is that, Gabe? That's because my PowerPoint presentation by itself is practically useless. It does not have any information. It is an outline only, as you can see here. I'm talking about double your business, and we're going to talk about capital to expand existing locations. We're also going to talk about financing new locations but there's no detail in that whatsoever. Why? Because I am the presenter. I will be giving you the information about capital and about expanding your, your existing locations and new locations. So the, the information behind this is the presentation itself. The other thing that the simple outline provides is a way for you to hang up that thought 
while some discussion goes around the room. So for example, I may say report earnings. Now, some of you are in business in this room. How many of you report all of your earnings? To whom? To whom? Very good question. <laughs> Who do you think we should be reporting our earnings to? The last person is the IRS. The IRS. We should report our earnings to the IRS. First is your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But be yeah. careful about that. <laughs> so reporting your earnings, this allows you to play the game. And when we say report your earnings, we're talking about sales tax. We're talking about all of the different organizations that are going to take money from that, those earnings. And your first inclination is going to be to hide those earnings so you can keep them for yourself. Well, then you cannot play the game. You can't play by the rules, and you will not have access to money to expand your business without that. Now, you see, I can deviate from my thought and allow discussion in the room because I have the outline right here that's going to draw both myself as well as the audience right back to the point. So we establish good credit over time. There's an example. Now, we say branding, as you can see on every one of these slides. We say keep it simple, because at this point, Jose Luis can write down notes right next to the slide. There's, there's uh, lines there for writing down notes, and he can refer back to that later on. To save some paper, I didn't print all of the slides for you, just using this as an example. That is, unless you want to take some notes, Freddie, on improving your existing locations. <laughs> okay, so we cruise through each of these slides, and we can have a discussion on each one. So some examples here of discussion. Debt financing. Dave, tell me what debt financing is. What does that mean to you? Going in the hole. <laughs> okay. Exactly. All right. Exactly, going in the hole. Why do you go in the hole with debt financing? Because you've got to pay it back. That's the definition of debt financing. You're borrowing money from somewhere, and you have to pay it back. We also have another form of financing, equity financing. Can anybody in the room give me an example of equity financing? Paying off your debt home? Mm. Mortgage? Yes. Your property. I'm sorry? Home equity. Home equity. Home equity. Equity financing. Yes. All right. Home equity? Yes. Uh, how about brother-in-law? Mm, <laughs> if you give him a percentage of your business, uh, still trouble. <laughs> Even more trouble, yes. Equity financing generally means you do not have to pay it back, that those proceeds are going to come from the receipts of your business, the profits of your business, through a percentage of, or of investment. So as we go through this, you can see we can talk about each point and we can stay on subject going through the slides. You'll, the other thing you're going to notice is that I do not use a font less than 35. Why? I have plenty of room here. And I want everybody to be able to read these slides as we go. You're not finding anything fancy. You ever heard the expression, just because you can, doesn't mean you should? <laughs> you know all the fonts and all the animations that come in PowerPoint? Ignore all of them, please. Keep your slides simple. You'll find that there's absolutely nothing on here to detract from the presenter as we go through these slides. I finally put a little knick-knack in there, a big question mark. See that? And that's it. That's, that's all you're going to find in fancy footwork for that presentation. So simply brand yourself. Simple. Keep the slides simple. Brand. Make sure they have a visual memory of your corporation, your organization, and yourself. Remember, the PowerPoint presentation is about the presenter, not about the slideshow. You know, I'm honored that Bill selected me to be part of his educational team. PowerPoint is a powerful tool if you use it correctly. I encourage you to practice here at Toastmasters to factor PowerPoint presentations into your future speeches. Mr. Toastmasters.